Greetings and good day. This is Donnie with Tech Winner, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, guys, after two years, my Wasserstein solar panel that I had connected to my Ring Spotlight Cam bit the dust. Would no longer charge, tried unplugging it, plugging back in, cleaning the panel, all the basic things that I've talked about on previous videos would not resuscitate this thing. So guys, I found myself on the market for a new solar panel, and you might be surprised with what I went with. And guys, I'm excited to show these results to you as well. So without any further ado, let's dive in and let's take a look. So guys, as we're getting started, I wanna be clear here, this is not a criticism of Wasserstein. You know, I have had mixed reviews that I've read about some of their products that don't last more than a year or two. You're paying less than you are for the Ring products, and the reality is it didn't last more than two years for me. Maybe you have a similar experience, maybe it's lasted longer. But for me, it was dead and it was time to move on. So this particular Ring Spotlight Cam is located on a shed that's about 225 feet from my house. And when the Wasserstein solar panel was working like it should, it was keeping the batteries topped off. But there were some drawbacks to that setup that didn't put it in the most optimal position for me. So as you can see here on this video, I've got this Spotlight Cam that's kind of on the corner of the shed. And as you go around to the side, this is the side that's facing east. And if you watched my previous video where I talked about solar panels, you know that I said the best optimal situation is having it pointed south or to the west. That's typically where you're gonna see the most sunlight for the most amount of time during the day, the most exposure to the panel. The more exposure it gets, the more charging it's gonna to provide to your batteries. But most of these solar panels include a 13 foot cable. So my options were pretty limited here in what I could do. So now I found myself in a situation two years later where it was one of those things of now that I can do it again, what am I gonna do differently? And guys, I really wanted to be able to position this on the south end of the shed. Putting it on the west side of it doesn't make a lot of sense because there's a tree on that side, and especially in the summertime, there's a lot of shade there, not a lot of direct sunlight, but the south facing end of my shed gets plenty of sunlight all year round. So one of the first things that I did when I started investigating different options was looking to see what I could do from like a cable extension experience. The, the Wasserstein models and the Ring models have a DC port out that connects directly into the back of the Spotlight Cam. It's designed for it, it works perfectly, and I wasn't having much luck finding extension cables that would really fit the bill of what I was looking for here. And having the option of doing this all over again, you know, there are days where it's overcast and I'm not getting as much charge, obviously. You know, if you're not getting the direct sunlight, the, the charge isn't near as effective of keeping those batteries topped off. And even over that last couple of months, I had to go into some power saver settings that I don't prefer to use just to keep those batteries topped off after that solar panel failed. Guys, I like to have my ring set up where if one cam detects motion, they all start recording and they start recording for at least 60 seconds. But over the last couple of months, the spotlight cam, I had to make a concession here that it was no longer linked to any of the other cameras as they were recording events. And if this cam itself were to pick up motion, it would only record for 30 seconds. The reality is, and I'm not exaggerating here, on any given day, I could have 60 to 70, even 80 events that happen. And going into this power save mode on the spotlight cam would reduce it to maybe two, three, four, five, depending on how much wildlife was going by my shed on any given day type of events that were happening. So even at that point, the battery continued to drain. So as I was shopping my options, the Wasserstein replacement would be $40. And this is a two watt panel, according to the specs. The Ring one, which I have another one of these that's just like it, that is also a two watt panel, retails at $50. But guys, in my Ring user groups, I've always been hearing about the Super Solar Panel. And I was very interested in this one, so I, I took a closer look at it, and it's actually spec'd up to five watts, but the retail cost is $100. Guys, I just, for me, don't see myself investing $100, I will go out there with a ladder and swap out batteries. But at the same point, I wanted to get out of this power save mode, get things back to recording, up to 60 seconds and having all of those cameras linked like I would want them to be. So then I started looking at some other third-party options out there that aren't necessarily designed for Ring. There was one USB panel by a company called SoShine that was selling for $13.99, $14. It sounds too good to be true, but I started reading about it and looking at the reviews and doing a little bit of research. This panel is rated up to six watts and at least in the advertisements and even in the reviews, it talks about it being waterproof. Now granted, if this is going to be mounted to the side of my shed, it's going to get wind, rain, snow, sleet, all of the elements. So I need something that's durable, that's going to last. 
And this model that I'm looking at here doesn't necessarily come with any type of mounting equipment either. So you have to get creative on how you're going to mount this to be able to actually capture sun. But another thing that stood out to me about this was that it had a USB out, a USB A connection that could just be plugged into any other USB A cable and then it could move on to the camera. So then I started looking to see what extension cables out there exist that would be compatible with the Ring Spotlight Cam. And I came across this model by Alert Cam. This is really designed as a plug-in, but the cable itself was USB-A and it basically just had a little power brick on the end like you would have for charging your phone or your tablet. And for $20, this was really interesting to me. So a $20 cable and a $14 solar panel, $34 in, I was totally willing to take a chance. So in the back of my shed, I found a spot to place a couple of additional boards to, to create some sort of an angle. And as you can see here, I mounted the solar panel with just a couple of screws. It does have a, a couple of openings there that you could drive screws screws through, uh, put a little washers in there so it would stay secure. And I placed a third screw behind the panel to help ensure that it stayed angled towards the sky. And as you can see, that vent above was a great place for me to fish the cable inside of the shed. So for the actual connection here of having the USB moving from the solar panel to the cable that was going to extend it onto the camera, I wanted to be able to at least have that inside to where that connector wasn't going to be exposed to the elements. All in all guys, this install took me less than 15 minutes total. And that was really from walking out there, planning out exactly how I wanted to mount this and actually implementing the mount. Another lesson learned for me with this, as you can see, this shed has a nice uh, darker wood finish on it. And hindsight is always 2020. I picked a panel that was black and cables that were black this time versus a white solar panel previously and it totally blended in a whole lot better. If I had it to do over again, I would have purchased the black spotlight cam for this shed as well. So guys, it does take time for the battery to start charging, but I was excited even that afternoon, which it was kind of a sunny day, a little bit overcast back and forth. When I started this, when I plugged it in, one of the batteries that I have in my spotlight cam was sitting at 38% and the other one was sitting at 10. And within just an hour, as it was getting more overcast, that 38 had gone to 42. And guys, it is winter, so I saw several days of overcast, but even during that, I continued to see some upward trends with it to where the one battery was sitting at 90, the other one was sitting at 30. And guys, the best day I had was yesterday where we went from that 90, 30 up to 91 and 92 on another battery. And by the end of the day, I checked again and guys, both batteries had reached 100%. So guys, that six watts, I'm absolutely impressed with. So one other thing I do wanna point out here that's interesting, I did have a few days where the temperature was below freezing and rings specs themselves say, that the cameras will not charge below freezing. So what's interesting is I have another stick up cam that's attached to a tree, which I've talked about in another solar panel video if you wanna see what that setup looks like. That camera itself is facing south, which means that it does get exposure to direct sunlight even in the winter. And I've noticed that even below freezing, I'm guessing enough radiant heat is hitting the camera that the camera itself isn't sitting below freezing, so it still allows that charging to happen because that battery consistently stays at 100% on sunny days. As you can see here, this spotlight cam in the winter is sitting on a side of the shed that constantly stays in the shade. It doesn't get that direct sunlight, so I don't think that radiant heat is hitting it enough to be able to tell the camera it's okay to start charging when it's below freezing. So I've had to wait for a good sunny day above freezing, and let me tell you something, this thing topped it off in a single day. So for a $34 investment, I'm getting a better rated experience than what Ring is saying they're getting with this super solar panel at $100. Yes, you heard that right. For $66 less, I'm getting a better performance out of this generic panel. Now, guys, time will tell. I've had this now for about a week and a half. Is this going to last the duration? You know, what is my experience gonna be like here? Am I gonna be making another video in a couple of years where I'm back to the drawing board again? Maybe, but for this price point, I had to take a chance and guys, so far, I'm absolutely thrilled with the results. And I'll put links in the description to both the solar panel and to that cable as well. If this is something that you find that you might be interested in trying out for yourself as well. But guys, going DIY, week and a half in, no regrets. If anything changes, I'll be happy to let you know. Thank you so much for joining me today as we walk through this journey. And guys, if you've tried anything similar, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And thank you so much for being a part of the Tech Winter Nation. If you haven't already, I would ask you to consider liking and subscribing and hitting that bell notification so that you're always staying up to date as new content is posted. But for now, I'm Donnie with Tech Winner, helping you make winning decisions when it comes to your tech. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys have a great day.